We're happy to see so many of you joining us here discussing the possibility that the Open 311 interface can offer to the cities. And unfortunately, Tom Steinberg could not make it, and, uh, but we still have here uh, Michael Evans, who barely make it, made it with all the flight cancellations from Boston, from New Urban Mechanics, so we're happy to have him here. And then we have Jaakko Rajaniemi from the city of Helsinki, and Walter Ferreira from the uh, city of Lisbon. And uh, we are, for us, for most of us, for three of us, this is the continuation of uh, two-day workshops for the City SDK project where we are developing interoperable open interfaces in uh, European cities. And it's exciting, or for us, it's really exciting opportunity to share our enthusiasm on this topic with all of you and focus especially on the participation domain and, like I mentioned, the Open 311 interface and opportunities that it gives us. And uh, we will hear from three cities, their experiences. They are all in a bit different stage in the process on implementing the interface. And I think it kind of portrays all kind of different challenges and uh, possibilities that arise from it. And uh, before I introduce the participants more in detail and hand on the floor to them, I go through a short uh, intro to the topic if there are some of you who are not so familiar with it yet. So as we all know, in the past, people have, most of us have communicated with our cities using letters or faxes or call centers or even maybe online forms, but even those are quite difficult to find from the city website and it's often difficult to know who, uh, de which department is responsible for which issue and so on. And uh, on the other hand, we have social media creating new kind of opportunities for communication, but also it creates a lot of expectations from citizen side on more faster reaction and uh, more updates from the city side as well. And most of us, of course, want to provide feedback digitally because we are connected to the internet constantly using our mobiles or tablets and internet uh, laptops and so on. And uh, even though the internet is really big enabler of the digital feedback, like I mentioned, mobile phones, I think, are one of the ways to take even more steps to ways to have this communication channel going two ways to the city and being a part of our everyday life. And even though 46% of our time that we use on mobile goes to this so-called me time, which includes uh, relaxation and entertainment purposes, we still use 22% of our time to discover prepare and accomplish things, and a lot of our communication with the cities go to the same category as well. And in the future, we will not just use our mobiles to buy tram tickets, but also discuss the accuracy of the tram lines. Sorry. Or even check out our children from the daycare with them. We will be growingly consuming uh, public services using mobile and internet and taking a role as active citizens using them, like here uh, in Boston and previously in Chicago, where they are adopting uh, fire hydrants to keep them clear from snow and ice during the winter. So we have now the tools and motivation to speak up. Often we review restaurants or, like I mentioned, discuss the tram lines and the connection, public transport connections. But is our voice really being heard in the other end, or is it just lost in the digital space? How can we actually enable citizens to give feedback that matters? So, as we have seen, there's a lot of open data that was discussed uh, within uh, Anthony Townsend's presentation as well. But then when we look at these systems that offer two-way feedback channel, it's a lot slower, the development. And, uh, there are often flashy ways to provide feedback, but when you send the feedback, it actually just disappears to this black box called info at. And here we believe that an interface can do a great deal. There's already more than 35 cities in the States and uh, the city of Bonn in Europe who have implemented uh, Open 311 interface, which actually, well, it goes by the name GeoReport V2, but we are more uh, knowing it publicly called Open 311. And the name has come from these uh, non-emergency call centers that can be in the states reached by calling to the number 311. And often these calls deal with digital infrastructure, road signs, potholes, and so on. But uh, the interface is actually uh, supporting sending of these kind of reports using, uh, with an image and location details 
to the reporter uh, and uh, to the city, and it keeps the reporter updated with the st status updates while the city is fixing the issue. And what it enables, uh, as it is a standard, we can have more ca more variety of apps and services, and uh, we can make really the giving these issue reports part of our everyday life, and citizens can decide which apps or services they find more useful for this purpose. And like I mentioned, the status... Oops, sorry. Sorry, I had some problem. So like here in uh, Boston, uh, Chicago, where a, a citizen finds a traffic signal that has gone out, and they report it to the city, and... Uh, they can keep the, following up the status of the, their report until the issue is being fixed. And like I mentioned, we in CTSDK project, we are bringing this uh, Open 311 interface to uh, European cities, which are seen here, uh, Amsterdam, Barcelona, Lisbon, Rome, Lamia, Manchester, and Helsinki. And there are, of course, also other European cities that are planning to take the same step with us. And now we will be hearing the more detailed experiences from uh, New Urban Mechanics in Boston, where Michael Evans is working as a civic tech evangelist, as Ni Nigel Jacob likes to call him, or designer and developer, as he seems himself. So maybe we hand the floor to you now. Hey, guys. Um, so I'm Michael. I'm Michael from New Urban Mechanics, and I'm a designer and developer in Boston. Um, so New Urban Mechanics is like this uh, civic innovation incubator in Boston, and we're embedded in the mayor's office. Um, dude. And uh, I just wanted to show you everything that we're doing with uh, Open 311. Uh, in the city. Um, so the, the first thing is there's this app called Citizens Connect that we started developing in 2007 uh, alongside with other things like C-ClickFix. Um, and basically it's a citizen reporting app and it lets, uh, it lets people report things like potholes and graffiti directly to the city. Um, and uh, we're using Open 311, which is this API to allow developers to seamlessly interact with the city to report, you know, graffiti or potholes directly to uh, departments like the Public Works Department in, in Boston. Uh, and so the next thing that we started doing last year was we're doing this thing called Commonwealth Connect. So it's spreading uh, Open 311 uh, across uh, the entire state of Massachusetts. Uh, and it's gonna allow smaller towns to, uh, you know, report, report quality of life problems, you know, throughout the state. Um, so the next thing that we use Open 311 with is an app called Street Bump. And it's a mobile app that lets you, uh, that uses your phone's accelerometer to map potholes around your city. Um, so it's this idea of like using citizens as sensors. Um, and, but you know, the app is actually uh, really sensitive and um, it maps all kinds of in inconsistencies in the road. Um, and we're working with researchers at Harvard to uh, come up with an algorithm to refine all the data. But ultimately, uh, Open 311 is gonna be used uh, to report potholes uh, directly to uh, to the public works department, but it's not like directly reporting it uh, like through you know through an app like Citizens Connect. Um, it just kind of does it on the fly. Um, so the next thing and the last thing is. Uh, we're building a, three, a thing called the 311 dashboard, uh, which uh, takes the deluge of 311 data and tries to translate it into a clean and interactive uh, dashboard uh, to identify 311 trends around the city. Uh, it, was a, it was a project that I started at Code for America 
Uh, it was designed at a, at a design firm called Stamen, and we're implementing it at New Urban Mechanics. Um, so the first thing I, I kind of wanted to talk about with that is this is sort of a tangent. But there's this guy in the United States, Jack Dorsey, who is the founder of Twitter and the founder of Square. And um, he has, so Square is this thing in the US that lets you accept credit cards on your phone. You just swipe, you, you, you attach a thing to your phone and you swipe your credit card to accept payments. So it's a very data intensive business. And he has this morning routine that he tweeted about in like 2010. So in the, in the morning, he runs, he showers, he has tea, he checks his square dashboard, and then he does everything else. So we were thinking, you know, what if city administrators could do that? And what if developers could help uh, cities build, you know, awesome analytics tools uh, with the help of Open 3 and 1 to, to allow city administrators and, you know, super citizens to check, you know, how quickly are um, you know, are there cities re uh, responding to problems? Uh, so I just wanted to show you some mock-ups. It doesn't really look like this anymore, anymore but uh, this is a little mock-up that shows like average response times on uh, particular city blocks in the city of San Francisco. Uh, and San Francisco has open 311. Um, so that's the first thing, the first mock-up. The second mock-up, so this is uh, looking at, at service request trends in Russian Hill, which is a neighborhood in San Francisco. So you're looking at like the top uh, s service requests that are uh, reported and the average response times and whatever else. Uh, and then the final thing, uh, this is just like a heat map of report density in San Francisco. It looks, well, whatever. Um, so you can sort of see like, uh, just where where requests really really popular in the city, uh, and that's it. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Jakko Janimi, and I work for the city of Helsinki. And I will tell you a, a, a story that uh, what we have been doing for the last one year on this area. And uh, one year ago, we started to think about building an interface to, to our feedback management system. Okay, sorry. And um, typically, sorry, is this on? Is this on? Oh, yeah, okay, I have to be closer. Uh, typically, when uh, cities start to, start, start to do these kind of things, uh, there's two, uh, one choice. They define the interface themselves or the vendor does it, because there's no existing standards typically in this area, and um, so that there's no examples of, of uh, open standards, and, and uh, then also civil servants, we don't have time to follow what's happening around the world. And, um, and typically when, it, when we find something, or the vendor finds something, they think that they can do better. So, so they built own interface, but uh, we were also participating in the city SDK, and we thought that if we de design something ourselves, it, uh, it doesn't work. We, there's an existing standard already available, so we selected this Open 311. And um, here are the basic reasons. Well, there's obvious reasons for, for selecting Open 311 and having an open interface uh, in general that, that you ha can have. Um, more applications, more services that can access your systems and send feedback to the city and we can respond. So, so you can have images, location in, in the feedback, feedback so also, so it's a big improvement into our system. But I, I would say that um, the main reason why we chose Open 3.1, it's, big, it's bigger, than, bigger than our own feedback in interface if we would have selected that. Because there's more applications, more more uh, tools for that. We saw these kind of dashboards. There's more experts. I can talk to these kind of events because we, we there's other cities who, who are also using these. And there's, in general, there's no more knowledge and, and, and cities to collaborate on, on this topic. Um, 
So th this is the picture from last month. We started the pilot. We were celebrating the handling of the first issue report. So this is quite new thing for us. And this is what we actually have done or currently is that we are call up, uh, here is the basic use case that, that there's something broken like a fence and the citizen reports that to the city system. Uh, but we are collaborating currently with the local news site called Metro and, and they, they have their own Fix My Street kind of service. And the, you, people can report to that site, news site. And then from that news site, when, when they see that there's a report that needs to go to the city, they forward that to the city system with this interface. And now it's in, in the, the city per personnel is now handling the system and then he thinks, uh, she looks at the issue report and thinks that, okay, we need to fix this. And he moves that to the public works department which does the job in, in, in Helsinki. And, and then we have the actual people who go to the field and fix the problems and, and now it's fixed. And in the end, we have the happy citizen who can follow the the whole process and see that, okay, now it actually fixed. Um, and this is um, the current state that we are having, that we are having this interface for these kind of uh, fix my street kind of things. But uh, our system is such that we, we are also looking for other use cases like connecting to other departments, uh, healthcare, education, or there's other ideas that, that typically citizens have questions and uh, about topics, we could perhaps use this kind of interface to build something or, for example, we could fix data. We, we are providing da open data and, and there's something, something uh, uh, that's not correct. You could send correct, uh, corrections uh, via, for example, using this kind of interface. And, of course, we will like to, to open this as soon as possible to, to other people to use. Um, I don't know if I have more time, to, but now we are in the phase, I guess, to, to start learning that when we get service requests in, we, we start to see that what kind of requests there are and what kind of issues there are. So, for, for the, <laughs> there's an example of trash bin. And the first thing to notice is that People may put these things into the locations that are not very clear. They put into the crossroads and there may be bridge over the street and you are not sure is it under a bridge or over the bridge or <laughs> on the bridge. Or, and in this case, the actual location was wrong, two kilometers uh, in the end. And the story goes forward and this trash bin, which looks very... It's the, all trash bins look like that in Helsinki, but that trash bin is not uh, handled by the city. It's handled by the private property owner next to this trash bin, and uh, these kind of <laughs> strange rules exist in Helsinki, and, and, but still people are reporting on these issues, and maybe we should somehow uh, help them understand that, that uh, these kind of... Uh, this trash bin is not handled by the city or change the rules or do something uh, improve the ways we handle this. And uh, there's other example of, of um, uh, wastewater lead that was reported that it's open, that somebody should uh, take care of that and, and put it in place. And, and then there was people going to that place and, and they didn't find the lead at all. Uh, and then later I, I went to the same location with Google Street Map or Street View and, and there was exactly in the point there is a, a, a lid, a waste for the lid uh, or the hole. And, but our city personnel couldn't find them, find it. And, and, uh, so, and they wasted a couple of uh, 20, 30 minutes and, and, and uh, we should have this kind of information available. I, I would say that um, this kind of infrastructure I, in information available for, for, for citizens, uh, but also we, we need to start using that ourselves. Um, okay, I think that um, I will close the presentation here. So thank you.
good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for your presence here today. Uh, first of all, allow me to congratulate Future Everything for the amazing event we are having. Thank Hannah for the invitation to give me this opportunity to show Lisbon experience and fix my street. Thank Rui that is seated in front and his team for developing the Fix My Street. And thank Sandra and Susanna that took precious time of hers yesterday to deliver me some print screens and some data to show you guys today. So, does these pictures I'm showing to you guys look familiar? If yes, you are in the right conference. If not, please take us. One day they will be part of your life. You will probably all see some things like that and try to find a way to report it. What would you do? You pick up your phone, try to reach the service in the city that would fix it, or you send an email or you send a letter, or you just complain to your neighbor next door and, well, everything normally would stay the same. But that was something that we started to think in how to change in September 2009, long time ago, as you may see. Uh, we started in our simplification program and I, that is someone that strongly believed that we must co-create, we must be co-responsible, that you, the citizens, are our eyes in the street. You are the ones that can make the difference. You are the ones that have to make the red light lighting to show us there's a problem there. You need to fix it. It's your job to fix it. Is your job, ours as officials, your job as citizens to inform us and be more demanded with us. You have to be demanded if you want us to do the job you choose us to do. So in September 2009, using Microsoft Silverlight, uh, our ArcGIS maps, uh, Bing as uh, the main map, we started with our Naminha Rua, something like you could say, on my street. But there was some limitations with it. And uh, by limitations, I mean, I'm going to, it's in the other slide, sorry for that. <laughs> but for, by limitations, the platform wasn't that stable. Uh, you only can access it via web because Silverlight, you have to install a plugin. So if you are in your office and you don't have administration permits, you will not be able to use it. There was a few lacks in it that we have to correct. But before that, allow me to show how does the process works. You, the citizen, report via web only in your laptop, in your desktop, laptop, whatever, if you have access to Microsoft Silverlight. Otherwise, sorry, use your phone, please. Uh, then it was anal analyzed by a control center. And then some local inspector would go to the spot to check it's true, it's not true. How can we solve it? How much does it cost? Let's do it in a time frame. Then it was solved, and then the citizen would have an answer saying it's solved, it's not solved, it's not solved because it's solved, it's not a true situation because. So, uh, like I was saying, there was main problems, the performance of the website, the multiple entry points, because, okay, this was, at that time, just one more entry point, not the entry point as it is today. So we, in 2010 or 2010, we decided to give another step. And what we, did we, what did we did? We st put it in Flash. Stop using Microsoft Silverlight, and it was Flash. We don't use no Bing no more. Use our own maps, our own ArcGIS maps, and the servers are more stable. Now you can access in real time, deliver the report, and so on. But even though we want more, we are not satisfied in, with what we had back then. We want more. Because, okay, from the citizen side, the problem is, let's say, 60% solved. But from the internal side, we have to manage these loads of information. It's easy to report now. But how can we, inside the city hall, manage the situation to deliver what you guys demand? Because, as again, you are our focus. We don't build services to be easy for us to do the work with you services because you demand us, us to do it because you are the reason why we are there. That's why we improved the performance again. 
we simplify the platform. Now there are no more pop-ups, no more data appearing from nowhere. It's faster, it's easier, it's intuitable, it's very easy to use. Uh, we simplify the feedbacks, no more complex answers like the situation wasn't solved because service XPTO did uh, an intervention there last week and uh, they called uh, Y and X and if you want more information you can call another number that is the blah 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 blah, whatever. Complex answers that we <laughs> sometimes delivered and well, the, it's just a kick to the front to give us more time, let's say it. No, no, no more answers like that. And we improve internal workflows. There's a team that manage the information. That team is responsible for go to the street and find if it's true to deliver it in, per in person, let's say by email or whatever, the information to the operational team that has to solve the problem. That operational team got SLAs arranged with the control center, let's call it that way, to deliver um, the information, the problem solved, and so on. And why did we did this in 2011? Why did we do this aggregation? Because, again, multiple channels. Now, if you send an email, you will have an auto reply saying, please go to on my street and report it. Otherwise, it could last longer because we have to do the report ourselves. And if you, 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 and you in the back as well do it, well, you can see it's uh, official in searching three or four or five or whatever you can count it information. If you guys do it on your own, yourselves, it's one, one, one. So it's easier for the service to act, it's faster. Uh, we have multiple reports, that's what I was saying, and an organized action because, well, if you send an email for the On My Street team, Okay, it's easy, it's on the spot. If you send it to, let's say, urban regeneration, saying that you have someone dropped something out in the street, some couch or some heavy materials in the street, urban regeneration would say, what? What can I do with this? This is not too useful information for me. I have to send it to another team. Another team will send it to another. No. Now you just go into On My Street and all the information flows to the same channel, to the same team. Uh, sorry for the Portuguese in this slide, but how did we manage to achieve this high level of service that we deliver now? So we have the external data that comes from the internet straight into my street and then straight into our intern workflow. You have the ones that come from phone or presential. It's our one-stop shop using a British concept. And they go into our internal workflow anyway. And you've got emails or letters or whatever that comes into any service within the city hall. And they go straight to the internal workflow. This workflow works beneath, on my street, and therefore they are cl clearly connected. So there's only one channel of entrance within the municipality. This is a print screen of Fix My Street. As you can see, the green dots here represent situations that are already solved. Yellow dots represent situations under analyze. Uh, red dot situations that had been just put it in the system a few minutes ago. Well, let's say a few minutes ago yesterday. <laughs> and uh, some situations that we haven't been the time to check. The gray ones are the ones that were still loading when I did the print screen. <laughs> and uh, if you zoom it out, you will have big data aggregates like 300, 1000 or something. They aggregate the data that is in that specific area. It's a three it's a three steps way to do the report. You have just to identify the spot, say which kind of uh, issue are you are reporting and click submit. Well, you can upload the photo and then you have four steps, but normally it's three steps to talk to us. In the other end, uh, our officials will have some kind of report like this with the green and yellow lights as well, the number of the request and the subject. 
if it's answered, if it's not answered. And uh, before I fly to Manchester, I was testing this this issue in a, in some tablets with uh, Windows 8, for instance. And uh, I took the inspection to the street to see if you can report, do it, it on spot. So n you, in the next few weeks, citizens will have the answer as just in time, as we fix it, you got the answer, your problem was fixed. And if the inspector, for instance, spot another thing that must be reported near that spot it was, he can report it as well. So some data, interesting data, more than 10,000 reports were made since January 2003, sorry, uh, 13, sorry, not 12. It was two o'clock in the morning, so. <laughs> um, top three issues. Trees and green areas, falling trees. It's winter, it's normal that some trees and branch from trees fall and there are many reports about it. Uh, public lightning, lighting, sorry, not lightning, lighting. There's are huge problems with public lighting, some streets without lights and well, they report that a lot. And objects pick up. By objects pick up, I, we are speaking about objects that people mislive in the streets by, well, it's night, no one is seeing, let's put the fridge, let's put everything out in the streets. And just to finish, the future. The future will be integrate this with the interface that Yako and Anna and all Forum Vitri and all the team of City SDK is developing about open one one interface and City SDK. And that would be extremely easy to you guys who develop to can create things that will improve uh, our efficiency, improve our way to co-create and easier citizens' life. That's our main goal, easier citizens' life. Let's hope that you can easily access your iPhone or your Blackberry Z10 or whatever and just report the issue because you got a word of mine. We will solve it. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay. Okay. So before I open it to the questions from the audience, I will still would like to hear more about the future, your visions. How is this going to change the relationship between the citizens and the cities? And are there some obstacles that we have to first overcome for that, your vision? Uh, related to the open 311 use to to uh, be able to reach uh, you can go first i think you on that one hey um i don't know I, I i think i think the thing with 311 in the united states which is all i have uh experience with is that so New York City is like a true 311 city. They they market the hell out of it. And you see it in every taxi cab, it's 301. You have an issue, just report it through 301. You just don't see that anywhere else. I mean, you don't see it in Boston, you don't see it in San Francisco. Um, and the reason that is the case in New York City is that Mayor Bloomberg has put his weight behind it. And 301 is viewed as an essential service there. So, you know, when Hurricane Sandy happens or any other sort of thing, um, they make sure that 301 is running and un under any circumstance. And it's, it's almost as important as 911, which is, uh, you know, emergency management. I don't know if you guys have that here, but. Um, so versus what happens in San Francisco where, you know, maybe there's like some emergency or, or whatever, uh, 301 isn't, you know, they don't really care if it continues to run. It, 301 almost becomes more of like an emergency management type of system and uh, people get reallocated, whatever. So I guess that's the, the big thing for me in the future is that uh, cities just start taking this like much more seriously. Okay, uh, well, we are in a different situation, but um, um, I think that uh, at least uh, uh, Helsinki is very excited about this new, new thing that, that, that finally we can start to show for the people that what the city is actually doing. Uh, currently, people don't 
know what we do and, and uh, they probably think that all people working for the city are pretty lazy people that they don't do much but now I, I, I think that I know that they aren't they are <laughs> pretty hardworking people and, and now this is a way to, to communicate to the people that, that uh, if you submit issues to, to the to the city, we we will actually do something about that, and you can you can watch and monitor. We we are transparent about what we are doing, and that's a big change. And um, there 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 was a lot of talk uh, beforehand that would we like to do that, that uh, show that what we can do and what we can't. But but the end result has been that this is the this this is what we want to do, and and and. Uh, want to increase that, increase that and 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 then um, hope that people start talking about uh, these these things and and start using and, and maybe they will actually also start to think about when they do certain things for example that break something in in the city or something like that that it costs money and and somebody has to fix it okay. Well, how do we see the future? That's a huge question. Uh, I think I have to st throw some tarot chart and try to find it, but no, no, we don't get, uh, no kidding anymore. I think the, you guys sitting here, those who develop and those who are citizens that participate actively in the city's management, you are the future. And uh, Open 311 opens a door to that future. It opens the door to developers who can create more in a single way. They know how to create. They can increase their expertise level by creating in the same way in a standard. And I think City SDK is the key to that door. You give you, we give you the key. Use it wisely. We, it's what we ask. To the citizens, the future, it will be easy to interact with us and we have to be commitment, committed with the cities and saying okay you, we, we are asking you to work with us so be sure we're going to be doing our job because this will increase our accountability, will increase our transparency and will increase our responsibility. Ask more from us, That's, it's my last call for you guys. Questions from the audience? I see some hands being right. Will somebody pass the mic or is this the only? <laughs> yeah, just, um, uh, sorry, can I go? Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks for that. I um, have uh, listened to um, similarly the stuff on Fix My Street, if you've, if you've heard of that, and other, um, other initiatives look into the same sort of reporting system, and there seems to be uh, very well developed, um, you know, alternative initiatives with that. And I think the interesting thing about 311 is the possibility for this response channel. Um, and that's not to say, let's not just generate loads of information about what's wrong, let's uh, have this uh, conversation about how it's fixed and how, how fixed it might be and the coordination of that. And it's particularly the coordination that I'd like to ask about. So there was a beer commercial um, in the UK years ago uh, about, I think it was a beer commercial, about where um, uh, several um, uh, utilities companies got together to put the holes in the road at the same time to fix the, uh, the street. Uh, saving the public much inconvenience and the, the joke was of course that the undertakers thought they might get on the act too and I wondered um, whether uh, you saw any um, potential in the 311 standard, the, either the data or the, the process behind it for actually coordinating responses in that way so um, uh, maybe less about the sort of responding to a certain issue but in terms of sort of planning or maybe coordinating um, you know realizing that several issues are actually symptomatic of the same uh, a problem, uh, you know, a water main needs fixing somewhere else, even though it's not where the pins are on the map, that sort of um, level of response. Hi. Okay. Um, 
so I, I, I think the thing that you're kind of getting at is what we're trying to do with uh, the 301 dashboard, which is tr you know trying to figure out like service request trends and like you know, figure out you know where where's like the most graffiti and and street light and like broken street lights. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Um, yeah, yeah, the, the okay. Um, so. Boston kind of does that. I think the city that's sort of a leader in that is New York City. Uh, so there's this guy, Mike Flowers, who's the director of analytics there. Um, and there's also Chicago, this guy, Brett Goldstein. And uh, they're just doing a ton to really just analyze um, just, where, uh, I guess, where, uh, god damn it. Um, <laughs> Just you know, just like the density of service requests and 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 where where are things most broken? Um, but it's still sort of like really early days for cities to do that, and 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 especially in the United States, um, they're uh, you know they're not analyzing data the way that that most businesses analyze data. It's it's not um, it's not terribly sophisticated yet. Well, uh, from uh, in in Helsinki, we don't have, have any analytics on on this, and and but uh, I would say that the, the one benefit of, of having this kind of standard is that that whatever they are doing in the USA, these kind of three one one dashboards or there's other these kind of services that it it should be very easy for us to to take those also into use and, and, and put our data in there because uh, we are using the same standard and, and see and start learning. So that's really the benefit of having this standard. Uh, answering not as the point of view of Open 311 because we are not using it yet. Uh, we have analyzed our data, our, even this data are showing it's in our open data set repository. So there are data sets with this data. And we normally analyze in to do clusters of principal issues, areas of the city, each which principal issue is more used among each, each kind of parish and so on. This is quite uh, good data for governmental programs, for instance, to understand uh, citizens' needs. So yes, the, the issue should not be in the reporting, should be in the, how we use the data that we collect, for sure. And now just me, let me ask you something. When you do a question, please raise in order we can see our faces, because we can from here, sorry. If I understood your com comment correctly, I think also other open data can help. So we can combine uh, the data on the road uh, constructions and so on and avoid unnecessary uh, issue reports on issues that actually are not, uh, like there's nothing to be fixed, it's just somebody's already working on it. Or is this what you were referring to? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we have still time for one more question. There was in the back. Yeah. Please go ahead. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks very much. It was really great to get three perspectives from three very different cities. It's a shame Manchester's not included on the panel because we're piloting it here as well, as I understand. Uh, yeah, you are in the process of getting right. to the piloting, we are okay. hoping. <laughs> I've got loads of questions. Can I ask two? And maybe not everyone has to respond to all of them. Is that all right? The first one was how are how are you being how are you using this to influence and inform things at a strategic level? So I'm thinking around resourcing and budget setting. I imagine that Lisbon's probably further along in the in the process. So perhaps you have more experience of how you're integrating this within strategic planning at a city level. And the second thing was what about, I mean this is great from a sort of infrastructure perspective, but what about the more human dimensions and aspects of city life? Um, you know, health and well-being, welfare, education. Can we see a role for this kind of um, mechanism to help generate feedback between citizens and the city and service providers from public, private, non-for-profit sectors around the delivery of services around so that have social value as well as being just about the infrastructure. Uh, 
so yes, we are using this data to inform and do some strategic planning. For instance, our framework of participation is quite huge. We got the participatory budgeting that comes from this kind of information because it's not just about reporting, it's about maintenance, it's about how issues are done. For instance, last uh, May 2011, uh, we restructured our way of working by dividing, dividing the city in five areas. And these five clusters of the city are oriented for their problems. And how did we get to those problems? By analyzing this data, by analyzing the citizens reported. So this is strategical for sure, and we are using it, and we will be keeping using it. It will, again, be in your hands to give us accurate data that we can use. Uh, just comment about this, uh, um, how to use the uh, feedback input. Uh, that's something that we are currently thinking that that how, when we get feedback, that how uh, we should use that more and, and influence our decisions, decisions uh, that how we operate. But actually, it's it's not uh, very well used in 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 Helsinki. But currently. We are developing these kind of reporting tools that how we know what, what is happening in, in the city and also we would like to to others outside the city uh, when we give this data to, 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 to show that what's happening, what's wrong, what, what's good in, in Helsinki and, and then try to take that information into the decisions. But it's, it's not very easy to use that. But there, there are examples currently that, that for example, when when we get snow that and, and we get a lot of snow reports and and uh, and uh, there there are small roads that are reporting all the time that they are not snow plowing and 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 because the, the, all the main roads are done first. That's how the city has decided. But now the thing has been that okay, maybe we are doing it wrongly because they we it may be that there are some roads that we are not. Uh, plowing at uh, snow plowing at all during the winter so you know, so people start using that to to re redefine the routes of the of the snow plows okay. yeah well one more example then we are kind of wrapping it just to, I was remembering here, so just to give you an example of how, how we can use this information in changing strategic and planning, there was an area of the city that people keep complaining about the pavement of that street. It was a two-way street with no sidewalk, but people have to cross that, that road to go to the subway station. So one report, two reports, three reports, several reports. What did we decide to do? Well, we can't go there and fix the pothole again. No, that's not the solution. Let's create conditions to people to can circulate there with the cars. So by those reportings, we change the road. We put one-way road and the, the cars that go down go to another road and we built a sidewalk. That's how we can use this data to plan, to change and to make it happen. Yeah, and to take on to that and to finish it off, uh to make it happen, we are continuing on this topic uh, in the white room upstairs after the coffee break. Uh, I think there is our open Etherpad address if you want to go and list some topics you would like to be discussed there if you are coming, planning to join us there. So open etherpad.org slash open 311. So please go and uh, add your comments there. And I would like to thank the panelists. It was nice to get hear your experiences and I think it inspired many uh, other people here to demand it to your cities as well, I hope. And thank you for the audience and active questions. Thank you. <laughs>